You are now tuned in to the Dads Who Lift podcast. Please give us a like, share, subscribe to the YouTube account. We are on www.dadswholiftofficial.com. All the podcast links are in there. We also have an apparel line. We're on IG as Dads Who Lift Official handle. We're on Facebook, Dads Who Lift Podcast. We also have a Dads Who Lift fitness group on Facebook that's Dads Who Lift Official. A group of 30,000 like-minded dads that are just trying to be their best selves and staying fit. If that's something you're into, please check it out. Uh, But we do this stuff for free, guys. So please give us a like, share, five-star review. We really appreciate your support. You are now tuned in to the Dads Who Live podcast. You have your host, Tyler Gata. Co-host, Joel Staley. So for this podcast here, we want to talk about luck. And the reason that I want to talk about luck is because I don't believe in luck. I don't think there's any such fucking thing as luck. And Joel, what do you say when someone comes up to you and says, must be nice? Oh, well, as I was just saying, I don't get that as much as I would like to, but I can assume. So you're putting in a pool in our backyard and it's going to be slick. Yeah. So I can imagine when people are coming back there, uh, they don't have a pool and, you know, they're a little jelly. Mm-hmm. Then and they have some beers in them. I could see that going down. So if someone were to say must be nice, then I mean, I would just say that's <laughs> yeah, pretty damn nice. But I mean, obviously, as you know, it doesn't you don't fall see all in, the work that it took to get to it that doesn't point. fall into anyone's lap. It's right. yeah, you have to definitely you reap what you sow. Mm-hmm. And I'm constantly trying to sow so I can reap. So if you're not willing to reap, don't be mad about you're not willing you're not to getting, sow. If you're not willing to sow, yeah. And you're not reaping anything. Well, figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So this is the whole deal. This is the whole uh, point of this podcast. What I want to talk about is that nobody ever sees the behind the scenes. You know, people see things and, oh, man, that, that must be nice. Or, or oh, man, that guy's just lucky. Or, you know, it always comes his way or, or things like that. But they don't see the grind. They don't see the struggle. I know your grind because I'm buddies with you, but a lot of people don't. People don't see the Joel waking up at four in the morning every morning, you know, getting to the gym, busting his ass all day long, skipping things with his daughter, uh, which that doesn't happen all the time. But sometimes point being is that there's a lot of grind that goes into getting what you want. And every single successful person, and I don't care, even if you're born with shit, if you continue to be successful, every single successful person has worked for what they have and they put in the grind, they put in the work to get there. So the whole like, oh, he's lucky, must be nice. I don't believe in that shit, right? Like, so must be nice. Yeah, it was nice when I was working, you know, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week, starting my company, you know, must be nice. Yeah, it was nice when I missed all my son's events, because I I worked my ass off and I was left the house every morning before the sun came up and got home after the sun came down. You know what I mean? Must be nice. Yeah, it was nice when my son was in daycare 12 hours a day, you know, five days a week and at my mom's on the weekends. You know, yeah, that was nice. There's sacrifice you have to put in for everything that you get. And after you put in that sacrifice, you can get to a point to where then you start working on balance, which is where I'm at now. You know, now I've got, I've worked myself up to a point to where I can have balance in my life. And I try to make balance a point in my life to where I don't have to miss my son's events, to where I can be a better father, to where I can work on these things. But it's still, I had to grind my ass off to get to where I'm at. And I also had to put my money where my mouth was. So there's been multiple times where I put everything that I own back into my company. I put everything that I have back into getting to where I am now. I mean, there's been times where I've been 100% in debt. You know, there's been times where uh, I thought I was going to go bankrupt, you know, and parts of my year when I had to buy my partner out years ago. Bankruptcy was... a <laughs> a big thing that year. Like it was on my mind and I, I worked my ass off. I got out of it. I paid shit off and I became, I came out on top. So my whole point is that people think that things just happen or people want to be the victim and play the victim and like, Oh, I should have that too. Or why don't I have that? Or why am I not successful? Or why do I not get there? Listen, man, you have to do it for yourself. Like you're only going to get there if you get yourself there right? So there's no such thing as luck. I don't believe in luck. Even Jordan, man, like people are born with abilities. I I believe that people are born with uh, special abilities. And if you, um, if you hone in those abilities, 
then you can become super special at something like Jordan. But still, Jordan worked his ass off. It's not like he grew up being the basketball player as a child that he was as an adult. I mean, he had an unbelievable work ethic better than anybody else's and an unbelievable mindset better than anybody else's to get to where he was, right? So this stuff doesn't just happen, right? So no fucking such thing as luck. And what I say is create your own luck. And the way that we create our own luck, I've got on my little nifty notebook here, some things wrote down. And this is what I came up with. I'm just going to go through them first and then we'll probably just dissect them and talk about them a little bit. Yeah. So one, know what you want. You have to know what you want before you can go get it. Like that's pretty fucking simple, but you have to know what you want. Specify what you want in your heart and what your passion is. Figure it out. Two, create a burning desire. So you have to have a desire for what you want. It's not enough just to say, oh, I want that. Ah, I kind of want that. No, you have to be like, this is what the fuck I want. And I'm not going to stop until I get it. I'm willing to give up this, this and that. Exactly. To get that. Like, this is my desire. I don't care what it takes to get there. This is where I'm going. This is where I'm headed. This is what I want. Three, believe you can achieve it. If you don't believe that you can do it, you're never going to do it. You're never going to have it. If you don't believe that you can have it, you're never going to have it. If you don't believe that you're good enough to have it, you're never going to have it, right? You have to believe before you can achieve. And believe part of that before too, you can achieve. We always talk about it. it seems to come back as having successful people in your network. And I found that that crucial part right there is if you're around people that are achieving and you see that they're actually going out and doing it, well, that makes that little switch in your head. Oh, wow, it is possible. I just have to do what he did, do this, this, and that, and I can get that too. Whereas if you're surrounding yourself by a bunch of people who are just feeding into their own sob stories and not getting anything, well, then it's natural that you're going to have that mindset of, well, what's the point? You know, that's for those guys over there. But people in my circle, it just doesn't happen for guys like us. Right. So let me, let me run through them all one time and then we'll go through and fucking break them all down. But yeah, no, you're good. (laughs) Know what you want, create a burning desire for it. Believe you can achieve it. Write down affirmations daily of that goal, which is also called auto suggestion and a great book to, uh, to read or listen to on this whole topic. And actually I listened to it this last weekend, which is what brought this up and refresh it in my mind is think and grow, think and grow rich. Um, But you have to write down affirmations every day. And these are affirmations basically like um, that are going to push you towards that goal or affirmations of you achieving it. Basically, the start of believing that you already have it before you have it. So I am, you know, say say my goal is to be. Oh, fuck. I don't know. Say, Say my goal is to get into real estate and own an apartment complex. So you start writing down affirmations. I'm the best fucking real estate agent in Omaha. I own an apartment complex. I own a sixplex, you know, get detailed, write down exactly what you want as if you've already had it, write it down every single day, write it down as if you've already had it. Um, next is gain special skills and achieve gain, gain special skills to achieve the goal and continue to learn and experience. So if my goal is to be the best realtor in town, but I'm not yet a real uh, licensed real estate agent, then obviously you need to take the classes to become a fucking licensed real estate agent. Or my goal is to be the best plumber in town or have the biggest plumbing company in town, but you're not a crazy great plumber, then maybe you need to go get some more experience on plumbing. So get ready for what you want, right? So get ready for what's going to push you forward. Um, the next one that I have down is manifest, visualize your goals as if they've already happened. And this is another one that goes with the write down your affirmations. And this is another one that you have to do daily. So manifest your goals. So what that means is like, you have these, you have these, um, affirmations that you wrote down already about your goal as if it's already happened. So things that you write down as if it's, as, as if it's already happened, then you shut your eyes, you visualize it. And I like to do it for like 10 or 15 minutes minimum every single day. But I shut my eyes and I picture that stuff as if it's already happened. So my goal is to be a millionaire, you know, Um, I have to write down, first of all, how I'm going to become a millionaire. But once I get all those affirmations wrote down, like a plan as to what I'm going to do to get this money, then when I shut my eyes and I visualize, I might think of me going through the steps, working, exchanging the money. And then I actually like want to picture a pile of money on my table and I want to picture the actual like number. So not just like a pile of money. I want to picture 
if I want $5 million, I want to picture five zero 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 in my mind. And I want to feel like that's already mine. So I do that daily. So the universe brings us, I know this stuff probably sounds crazy, but it's real. The universe brings us what we want. Like what we see in our minds is what we get. What we believe and what we see is what we get. So if you believe and see this money and you believe that you can get this money, if that's your goal, that's going to come to you. Um, so next I have take action, look for opportunity. So nothing, nothing is going to just fall in your lap, right? You have to believe that you can get it. You have to have a plan to get it. You have to see yourself as already having it. You have to have a desire to get it, but, but, but then you have to go take that action. You have to actually work towards getting it, which is where that, that the, the part comes in of like, Oh, must be nice. No, you have to grind your ass off to get to this point. You have to make sure that you're, you're making things happen. And I'm a firm believer in when you're doing all these steps that I listed above and you want this stuff, guys, there's going to be opportunity that comes your way. Like there's going to be opportunity, whether the universe brings you opportunity or, you know, some people say that what you see is what you get. And that's just what your mind will start picking up on. But if it's fresh in your mind, you're going to see opportunity come your way. There's going to be opportunity that falls in your lap. Um, it's, it's just like, you know, every time I lose an employee, you know, I'm all worried about how am I going to replace that guy? How am I going to, what's going to happen? How am I going to find somebody else? And it always just, someone just always comes in. It's like the door's open. So you're opening the door and anytime you create space for something in your life, it's going to be filled in. And it's going to come to you. So look for opportunity. Don't miss opportunity and take action. Lastly, I have do not stop. Don't take no for an answer. If this is something that you want and something that you desire 100%, you have that burning desire in your heart, you don't ever stop. There's a story in Think and Grow Rich about a guy that bought a gold mine, right? And he does all this stuff with his family, goes and borrows money. He's got the desire. You know, he's got the plan. He's got the desire. He takes the action. He goes home. He doesn't have the money to, to, to buy the equipment to mine this gold. He goes home and, and uh, begs, borrows, steals, get money, gets money from his family and friends, goes back and, and mines. And the vein that he's on runs out and he doesn't have enough money to pay everything back. And he goes a little bit further and he, he's getting discouraged, getting discouraged, getting discouraged, and he stops mining. So he basically gives that mine to a junk man um, for like pennies on the dollar for the equipment that's left and gives it to this guy. And this junk man, this is a mine in Colorado. This is a true story. This junk man says, all right, uh, I'm going to call in a specialist. So the junk man calls in a specialist. The specialist comes in and says, no, this vein is going the opposite direction of the way that they were looking. And this junk man gets on the vein and finds millions of dollars in gold. It's only like a foot or two, a couple yeah, feet three off feet, too. Three feet. Yeah. So this guy was three <laughs> feet short of millions of dollars in gold and he stopped. So you don't ever stop. You don't know when it's going to be your time. Like you, you might be inches away from this. So don't get discouraged. If it's something that you want, you don't take no for an answer. You go after it and you get it no matter what. What I thought was cool about that story was the original guy who bought all the equipment he ended up getting into insurance yeah after yep. uh he found out the story that the junk man he sold all his stuff to basically hit the lotto and he took that as a lesson for the rest of his life yep. as he never took no for an answer again and he would take four five six no's before finally getting to the yes but he ended up being this incredibly successful insurance man just from learning that lesson. Sold a million dollars a year in insurance. Yeah. Like he was still a super wealth. He, he ended up learning from his mistake and moved forward and fixed the part of, you know, he had everything else in place. He fixed the part of don't stop. And he turned into the best insurance agency. And I'm sorry, insurance broker, I believe in yeah. the United States. I'm pretty sure. I think. Yeah. Pretty sure he's the only one that sold over a million dollars a year in insurance every year. Yeah, that's a great book. If you haven't read Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, it's one of the classics. It's an older book, but it rings true to today, which is kind of funny. Even in that book, they're talking about like big opportunity, you know, radio. It's losing its luster. Yep. Something new is coming down the pipeline. If you can get and it's basically describing podcasts way before even the first podcast was out. So it's like getting a uh, a look at that now it's like wow they were on it they were 100 percent right right when that book was wrote i don't think social media was out yet either was no it? i'm pretty sure it wasn't no one thing you said that um you got to put in the work when you're first getting started and i know you got into business more so than fitness and i'm vice versa i mm -hmm. got into fitness and then i got into business but i think we both learned the same lessons 
um, vice versa from each other. What I found out with fitness is, okay, if I work really, really hard and I find out what works and I continue to put in the work daily, I can sculpt this physique I want. Yep. And then after learning that lesson, I was like, oh, well, that's cool. I did that. I wonder if I could do the same with a business. It's the exact same thing. So if you're a 350 pound man, you have to work a lot harder at that 350 pounds to get down to 200 pounds lean muscular physique than you do to stay, maintain that 200 pound physique. Same thing with a business. If you're getting off the ground, you have to put in long hours. Mm -hmm. You got to put in a ton of work. You're going to have to miss out on some stuff. But once you get it to where you want, granted, it's not just you don't kick your feet up at the beach all day. You still have to continue to put in a lot of work. But to maintain or even continue the growth of the company is a lot easier than starting off and building that momentum. You've already got momentum going. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So I think it's kind of funny. We crisscrossed. And uh, I think you learn that with business. You're like, oh, if I did the same thing with my physique and my fitness, I could do it right around that same time. I was like, I wonder if I could translate this into other aspects of my life. Yep. And once you learn that lesson, okay, if I put in this work, if A plus B equals C, A is hard work, B is consistency and C is result. Like I can apply this to anything I want in life. But just like you said, the first step is, or one of the first steps is, okay, what do I want? You got to figure out, all right, what is my goal? And you apply the equation from there. Absolutely, man. So this is, these are steps to create your own luck, right? So if there was such thing as luck, if you want to call something luck, this is how you create your own luck. I don't, I don't believe in luck, um, but this is how I create my destiny, you know? So anything that I want, I know that I can achieve it. If I just put my, my mental energy, power, mind, and physical energy, my thoughts, thoughts turn into things. I've said it multiple, multiple times, but thoughts really do turn into things. So if you focus your thoughts on what you want, you create that burning desire for it. These are steps that'll allow you to get there. And this shit doesn't happen overnight, guys. Like you're not going to become an overnight millionaire and overnight success just because you did this for two days or a week. You know, this stuff takes time. So don't sit there and get discouraged, but that's part of that. Don't stop. You never know how close you are. If you stop and turn away when you were a foot away from something, you know, that's, that would fucking suck. There is an old article that my, uh, one of my old bosses sent me back when I was in transportation because we would always push back on cold calling. We're like, cold calling doesn't work. We want to send emails. It's awkward. You get hung up on, you get told, no, it just kind of sucks. But so he sent out an article called does cold calling work? And the article, as I recall, it basically said that this guy wanted to find out the answer to that question. So he cold called like 50 people a day and uh, did it for two weeks. And although none of the people that he directly cold called worked, like cold calling didn't work in that aspect. Mm -hmm. But he found just by putting in all that extra energy out there and being on the offensive instead of just sitting back and waiting for calls. He found all these other opportunities start to come to him and he chalked it up to like, kind of like what you're saying. I was putting all this energy out into the universe. And even though the cold calls himself didn't land, he ended up like doubling his, uh, his income for those two weeks, just because all these new opportunities started coming in and he chalked it up to, all right, energy out is going to, equal energy back to me. Yeah. So I think about that all the time. If I'm just taking inbound leads or I'm waiting for stuff to come to me or fall into my lap, I'm like, okay, well, what could I be doing to at least, if nothing else, put that energy out there and not only feel better about myself when I go to bed that night, knowing I did everything I could, but also set myself up for success as much as possible. Absolutely. And one thing to, to state in this stuff too, is like, thoughts do turn into things and wherever you put your passion and your desire in your mind, like whatever you think you're going to get or whatever thoughts you have about yourself or about your goal or what you want in life is going to come back to you. And that doesn't only happen for positive thoughts or positive aspects. That happens for negative things as well. So if you're sitting there thinking in your mind, like, Oh man, I really want to start a company. I really want to, you know, do this, but I, I don't think I'm good enough or, you know, you, you constantly have doubts that it's not going to work out or, you know, you doubt yourself or you doubt, you know, your clients, are people really going to want this? They're not, you're not like, if you have doubt in your mind, if you don't even think you can do it, other people aren't going to think you can do it, you know? Yeah. And if you say, okay, well, I could never start a company because I said I was going to lose 50 pounds and I failed. 
I got married and the marriage failed. I tried starting a company before and it failed. Instead of saying, okay, well, I can't do this. I'm apparently a failure. What do we always talk about? You learn from your failures. Why, yeah. did, why did I not lose the 50 pounds? Oh, I was trying to do it by myself when I should have maybe had a community helping me out or a coach that knows yep. what he's actually doing. Why did my marriage fail? Oh, because I wasn't putting enough time and energy into it. Why did my first business fail? I didn't have a way to distribute my products. I couldn't figure it out. So yeah, everyone fails and stuff, but instead of chalking up to, I failed all these things, I'm a failure, say, okay, well, why did I fail that? Okay, well, how can I apply that to this thing I'm trying to do now? And that is ultimately how you're going to be successful. Yeah, absolutely. So the know what you want, I think that's pretty easy and self-explanatory, right? Um, if, if you have a passion desire for something, you're going to know what it is. Um, if you don't, I guess just sit there and think, think about what you want to do with your life. Think Try about new what shit you, too. Yeah. Think about what drives you. What, what do you get happy about? You know, what, what are you, what are you excited about? What do you like doing? What do you, what do you do and forget that you're even doing it? Right. It's so good that like time just flies and you don't even realize, oh shit, it's been three hours. That's what you, that's what your passion is, right? The things that make you happy, the things that get, that you get excited about, the things that you have a burning desire for inside your chest every time you do them, that's your passion. So figure that out, create that burning desire. Once you know what it is, then create that passion for it that, you know, no matter what, this is going to happen. This is what I want. This is, this is my driving force. This is what I feel good doing. This is what I want my life to be, you know, believe you can achieve it. I think and we kind of talked about it, but I think this is probably one of the biggest points to it is that no matter what, if you don't think you can do it, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to come. Find the best in, if we're talking about business, find the best in your industry and say, okay, what are they doing? When I first got into selling fitness programs, as you know, Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like 50 bucks a month or something like that. And then I see that there's other online fitness coaches and they're doing uh, seven, eight figures a year. I'm like, okay, well, obviously my business model is not ever going to, I mean, I would have to train hundreds of thousands of clients, which isn't even possible to give them the attention and everything they need. So I'm like, okay, well, what is this guy doing? And just going down those rabbit holes, I'd say, oh, okay, I'm not doing that right. He's doing this. When I was doing that, that makes a lot more sense. Chances are in 2020, 2021, whenever you decide to do this thing, there's people already doing it and they're being successful in it. So, or something very similar. So find out what they're doing. You don't have to figure it all out for yourself from the ground up. Yeah, no, I agree, man. And so once you believe that you can achieve it, writing down those affirmations, I, I feel like the writing down the affirmations part helps you believe that you can achieve it as well. I kind of like, you know, if you're writing down affirmations, for one, I think there's just something special in writing some stuff down. Yeah. You know, just, I don't know what it is. There's just something in writing things down that makes it more real, makes it more solid to me. It makes me believe it more. It makes me feel like it's more of a... F- tangible thing than just a thought in my brain. You know what I mean? You're kind of putting it down to life, if you will, as you're writing it. Um, so write those affirmations down about what you're going to, um, achieve and, and the way that I do it. So I, I, I do this every day. Um, I, I have affirmations that I write down every day and I manifest every day. Um, I've been doing 75 hard phase one, where you actually have to visualize every day for at least 10 minutes and 75 hard phase one, Um, and there's a reason for that, you know, you're talking about a guy that runs one of the most successful podcasts in America and does a hundred million dollars a year in his company. I wonder why is it having people visualize because it fucking works. It works. So the way that I do it is I don't really like, I don't think of my affirmations when I write down my affirmations of what I want to achieve as, as in like, I am love. I am good. Like those are my positive affirmations. I do those too, but that's not my manifesto affirmation. When I write down my manifest, I pretty much like, I basically write a story down of what my life is in a day of having the goal that I want to achieve. So if your goal is, you know, I want to have the best, uh, fuck, I don't know. I want to have, I want to own a grocery store or I want to, that's kind of a weird one. Or, you know, I want to, I want to own a, uh, repair shop, a car repair shop, you know? So you write down the goal. Um, I, I write down a whole day of what I see as I'm living that goal, 
right? What about like your dream girl? Like, yeah. So single that, dad though. Yeah. So for single people, um, <laughs> that's that's funny. That's actually part of what my manifest is, is is my wife. You know, one of my biggest desires is to get married someday and to find my soulmate and have that person that, um, you know, is mine that loves me and chooses me every day, just as I choose them every day. That's, that's one of my biggest desires and passions. So, and along with that is, you know, in my manifest, that's a big part of my manifest. And we have my son being happy and healthy, you know, living a great full life. That's part of my manifest. And then we have dads who lift blowing up and having, you know, over 5 million followers and, me coaching and and travel the world speaking at events. And that's part of my manifest and that shit's going to happen. And so what I do is I write down, it's just one page, one notebook page, but I write down a day as of when I wake up to the end of the day and all the stuff that I go through and I write down everything that I see. And I, I, um, I detail my wife out. I detail how happy my son is. I detail what my companies are doing. I detail, you know, dad to lift has 5 million followers and I detail everything out. And that's what I write down in my affirmations. Um, then when I manifest that every day, I'll read through that whole thing three times for some reason for me, three is just, I don't know, three is a number that sinks in. So I read the whole thing three times through. I put on my manifest music and I visualize, it. I close my eyes and I visualize it from the beginning all the way to the end. And I run through that whole day as if it's already happened in my mind and I can feel it. I can see the things I can see my wife. I can feel the love. I can feel the happiness. I can feel the money. I can feel the things coming to me. I can feel the opportunities coming my way. That's part of it. Opportunities always come to me. Money always comes to me. That's part of it. And I can feel that shit. And mine usually takes, honestly, probably like 20 to 30 minutes to get through my whole visualization because I visualize it very detailed. And um, I've said this before, but a lot of times when I'm done, I mean, I'll open my eyes. And at the bottom of my my manifest, I always write down, I'm abundant in love, success, and money. And so I'll say that three times when I open my eyes. And I've a lot of the times got like tears in my eyes, not like crying, but like, you know, it's just, it's an emotional, powerful thing that, where you can actually feel it. And that's how you want it. So you want to be able to feel it as if it's already happened. <sighs> this this gets in. I don't want to get like too crazy into this to where people think I'm nuts, but there's there's conscious mind and there's subconscious mind. And there's there's the whole point is that like your body, when your eyes are shut, you know, your body doesn't know if something's real or not. If you're running through it in your mind and you can feel it and see it as if it's already happened, your body thinks that it's already or I'm sorry, your mind thinks that it's already there. Right. This is the same thing as like you open the door and, you know, you see something that you think is a spider and you go, ah, and you freak out. Right. Your body, you get all scared and then you realize, oh, shit, it wasn't a spider. Well, in that time where you thought it was a spider, that was real. Your reaction was to your to your mind was, oh, God, there's a spider. I'm in danger. And that was real to you. Right. It's the same thing when you manifest, when you're shutting your eyes and you're going through those emotions and you feel it as if it's already happened. It's real to you and your mind and your subconscious in that time. And there's something about that. I don't know how the fuck this shit works. Um, I don't, nobody does, but there's something about it to where that brings it to reality. Like what you see, what you feel, what you think is what you get. Thoughts turn into things, whether that be, you know, auto suggestion through your, um, uh, actions after that because you believe that's what's what's coming then you take the right actions to get it or whether the universe really does put opportunity into your lap and bring you what you want who knows how it really happens but i know it works and it happens right um so that's a big part of it and that's those are things you have to do in my opinion every day you have to write down that manifest and you have to visualize it and that's going to bring opportunities to you. That's also going to help you believe that you're good enough to get these things. And, and like in my mind, after, after doing these visualizations, these affirmations and these visualizations for so long, there's not one fucking doubt in my mind that this shit's not coming. I know it's coming. I know it's, it's already out there in the world. It's already there. If somebody else can get it, I can get it too. If it's real and it's out there in life and you can get it, I can get it too. It just hasn't come to me yet. And that's okay because shit doesn't work out on my timing but I know it's there and I know it's coming and there's not a doubt in my mind about that. And I think that's the whole point to this. When, when there isn't a doubt in your mind that, it, that you're going to get it, at some point you're going to get it, right? So the gain special skills deal, to me, that's more like, um, you know, hey, I want to create, you know, talk about Henry Ford, which is also in the book, Think and Grow Rich. I want to create a V8 motor, right? Or 
I want to create a new diesel motor or whatever. Say, say that's your, your, your ambition. Uh, but you don't know anything about building motors, but maybe you need to do some research about building motors and learn how to build motors. Right. Or I want to, I want to create an app. Or find people who can. Is that what yeah, he did? Yeah, right. Basically? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or I want to create an app. Well, fuck, I don't know anything about the internet. All right. Well, you need to do, you need to gain some, some knowledge and some experience figuring out how the fuck you can either create an app yourself or find somebody to create the app. Right. So it's all part of this building process. Um, and then, yeah, once you get that stuff figured out, you got the manifest down, you believe that you can have it, you know, it's coming. Then you take action every single day. You have to take action towards that goal and you don't stop taking action. You don't look out for opportunities, be aware of things coming your way. Um, use those opportunities as, as they come to you, take action to get to where you want to be and don't stop until you get it. There's two things I might add, and I'd be curious your take on it, mm-hmm. uh, depending on exactly what your goals are. But we just had Tim Rexius in here. He's always talking about make a friend, make a make a sale. Yeah. If you're not actively networking, getting to know new people, I mean, the more people you know, the more opportunities you're going to have. Yeah. Because we're all different. We all have different needs. So if I sell fat loss, and I'm, I'm only talking to the same five people, and I've worked with two of them already... Three of them are already don't have any fat to lose and I don't meet anyone else. It's going to be hard for me to make any business, right? Right. So find ways that you can actively network with people, get to know people, because even if they don't have that need right then, well, they know all these people too. And you just spider web out with all these people who may or may not either work for you or work with you someday, need your services, know somebody that might need your services. Um, that one's definitely huge. And I forgot the last one. So we'll just leave it. No, at that. I, I agree with that too. And I think that's part of like the part of the gain special skills, learn, learn, ex, um, gain experience type deal too. And part of that can also be, you know, hire a fucking coach. If, yeah. if there's somebody that already has what you want and you need guidance toward that thing or need to learn more knowledge on how they got to where you want to be, seek out friends, seek out coaches, you know, surround yourself with good people. That's always going to be a number one thing is surround yourself with good people. And I do like the networking part too. It's actually funny because there's, there's something in my mind this whole time as I'm talking, I just haven't said it, but I, I saw a Grant Cardone meme this morning on the way here to shoot this podcast. And it was like 10 things that Grant Cardone does every day. And one of the things was, uh, something to the effect of, I, I like, don't quote me, but basically something to the effect of, talk to strangers. Like he talks to strangers every day. Like he'll meet new people every day and talk to people every day. And I think that is part of your networking and building your, your circle. And, you know, just like the guy that did the 50 cold calls and didn't actually make a sale, he might not have made a sale, but he obviously left a good impression on some of those people, maybe made a couple friends and that's what it's all about. So, you know, Tom didn't sell, didn't buy from him, but Tom thinks, man, that was a really good guy. And now Tom knows what he does. And next time Tom's buddy says, hey, do you know a guy that does this? Tom goes, yeah, call this guy. And then he made a sale. Yeah. So I think only like 5% of people are ever in the buying pocket right now. And then like 55% of people will be in the buying pocket within the next year or two. And then like 40% of people just will never be in the buying pocket, which is funny because before I was running Facebook ads for my marketing Really, all I was doing is reaching out to random people on Facebook, starting conversations. Um, Some of them would look at my profile and say, oh, this guy's getting these people really good results. I'll ask him what he's doing. But honestly, probably only one or two out of 50 to 100 people I'd add would do that. The other ones, I'd start a conversation. It wouldn't go anywhere. And then three, four or five months later, they send me a message because now they are in that buying pocket. They have know who I am. We've talked before. They've continued to see results on my page. And then they come later or they refer a friend later. So like you said, it's not going to be overnight. But if you continually put that work in, it's like if you went and did a set of bicep curls today, you're not going to wake up tomorrow with the Arnold Schwarzenegger arms. But you do it every day. You're definitely going to have bigger muscles a year from now. It's just how it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this shit can work for anything doesn't just have to be business. No, I mean, business, your, fitness, your, anything. Yeah, your your goal may be to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know? You can use the same step, the same process to get that. I mean, your goal may be to be the best father you can be. Your goal may be to be the, be the best husband you can be. Your goal may be to find your soulmate or get married like mine is. You know, my 
my whole manifest. And it's, it's actually funny because I'm not even dating right now. Like, so it's kind of, kind of productive, but, um, but my whole, like my whole, my b- biggest desire right now, I've been single for a long time. You know, I've, I've raised my son by myself for he's, uh, for like nine years now I've raised my son by myself and, uh, you know, I've, I've ran my businesses by myself and I'm a super independent person. And so I don't need, I don't have to have somebody, right? Like, it's not like I'm, I'm going to die if I don't find my soulmate, but my biggest desire, and I think everybody's desire is to find that special person. I think everybody wants to find that special person. And I finally got to a point in my life to where kids doing good. Life's good. Things are balanced. Businesses are good. I mean, I've, I've got things comfortable enough to where I want them. And that's now my biggest desire in life. So um, most of my affirmations and manifest is about that. There's like a time, there's like maybe 25% at the bottom. That's like, Oh, and yeah, this is what I want to do with the companies and the money that comes to me and all that stuff. But I've also been working on the money part and the manifesting part, or I guess I've been working on the money affirmations and manifesting forever. I've owned my company for 11 years now, my main company. And so I feel like I've already got that momentum going that I already believe that no matter what money is going to come to me. Like I, no matter what I always believe, I already believe that opportunities are going to come to me. Money's going to come to me. I feel like that's already, that's like on autopilot. Like no matter what, I I don't worry about money. And it's not because I have tons of money. I'm not like crazy rich. I've just learned that no matter what, you know, I lose accounts, I gain accounts. You know, I lose business, I gain business. It's just how it's always been. It always comes. It always filters through. I've never ran out of money. No matter how hard things have been, I've always got through it. So I've got a confidence there that I don't have in the other part that I'm trying to achieve. Right. So that's why the manifest is mainly on that for me. And that is working towards, I believe, bringing that confidence into my life so that that comes just as well as money comes And And I'm getting there. Like I said, I, there's no doubt in my mind that it will come and that it's out there. Um, it's just kind of like, uh, waiting for it now, or, you know, timing's not ever on my timing, you know? So I guess the whole point is that, that this can work for anything. There's no fucking such thing as luck. Fuck your luck. Go out there and make it for yourself. Life is what you make it. Thoughts turn into things. Do it. The last thing is, uh, which this might've been my second thing. I can't remember anymore, but, uh, what I was going to say regardless is do something that sucks. Like once a day or it gets you out of your comfort zone right now for me it's jujitsu i fucking hate going to jujitsu i hate i don't every day i wake up I you liked it i hate it i like it after i do it dude that's how right now for me it's the cold showers yeah bro i fucking hate cold yeah. showers cold showers are perfect for this dude so it's just something it takes every me like day that- five minutes to work up the fucking nuts to actually get in the cold shower mm-hmm. like i've actually got to be like in the shower I usually jump up and down a few times. I'm like, don't be a pussy. Don't be a bitch. Come on, let's go. <laughs> and then I get in the cold ass shower. But then after the shower, after my body gets acclimated and afterwards, I'm like, eh, that wasn't that bad. Yeah. It's jujitsu for me every time. I wake up, I go, oh, here's three reasons why I could skip today. My neck hurts. I got allergies. I think I'm getting sick. <laughs> and then just the like Rona. you said. So this happened on Monday. Uh, I woke up. My neck was stiff. I think I slept on it weird. Or maybe it was from getting choked out the week prior. Amy was sick. I had allergies. So I'm thinking like, oh, I think maybe I'm coming down with something. So I said out loud to Amy, I was like, you know, I'm going to sound kind of like a bitch right now, but I think I'm getting sick. My neck hurts. I don't want to do any damage. I'm just going to skip jujitsu today. And she doesn't give a fuck. She's like, yeah. okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But just saying it out loud is like, I sound like a bitch. I'm like, oh, you, you sound yeah, like a yeah, bitch because you're, you're being, being a bitch. bitch. <laughs> so then I went and of course I... It was fine as I was doing it. Of course, I'd rather be laying in bed still or just doing something else, watching TV, doing really anything else, eating donuts. Like, that's what people don't get is this isn't I'm not the type of person that wakes up. and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to do these sales calls. I can't wait to go to jujitsu, do all these things that it's like you have to train your brain to do the shit that you don't want to do, because even if you are doing what you're passionate about right now and it's fun for you. The time comes where it stops being fun. You get tired of it. You'd rather be doing something else, but you have to train your brain to do it regardless. And that's when you're going to find that you're able to stick to something and put enough work in to be successful because it's not always going to be fun. So I don't know if people think that it comes easy to us and we just, oh, we just like to work extra hard and do all these things. It's like, no, you just have to say, well, this 
might suck, but if I do this and this, I get to go to bed tonight knowing I, I put the work in, I get to sleep well, and then you just you don't have that thing in the back of your mind saying like, Hey man, just, you really bitched out today. By the way, This is what I was going to say to that though, is you've created the momentum of being an achiever. Yeah. So it's not that it's, it's not that we want to do these things, but you do get, you feel accomplishment and you do feel good for achieving. So you've yes. created the momentum of being an achiever. And so have I. Right. So like I'm doing the 75 hard phase one, part of the 75 hard phase one is eight power list items a day. Dude, never once have I worried about the eight powerless items because I do so many fucking things in a day. Like my powerless <laughs> is probably more like 30. You know what I mean? Like it's just never been. I, at first I was kind of like, oh, fuck, eight powerless items. And I thought of everything that I'm doing. And I'm like, yeah, no, no big deal. You know what I mean? So it's not that I like to do these things. A lot of times I'm like, I'll sit down and I'll be like, oh, man, I just want to like veg out right now and lay on the couch. But. I've got the momentum going of this is what I do. This is who I am. I'm a badass. Sometimes I even have to tell myself, dude, you're a fucking badass. Let's go. But when I get done, I always feel better about it. Yes. I always feel accomplished. I always feel productive. I like to be a successful member of society. I like to get shit done. And if you're not at that point yet, it takes 28 days to form a habit. Be a badass. Get after it right now. Give it a month or two, you'll be in the same fucking position to where, dude, if I take breaks, I feel like a piece of shit. You know, like I don't like to take breaks anymore. I like to get shit done. It makes me feel good to, to be an achiever and do things. Yeah. Last thing I'll say on the subject is future pacing has helped me a lot. So even for the same example of the jujitsu, say it's, it's at eight o'clock in the morning. I wake up at seven o'clock. Naturally, we go to, all right, at eight o'clock, do I want to be sitting downstairs having my coffee, enjoying myself, or do I want to be getting fucking choked out, sweating, have this big old fat guy dripping sweat into my mouth? Like, obviously, A. But what I do is I future pace a few hours, like, say, noon. Okay, come noon. Because noon's coming regardless, whether yeah. I go to jujitsu or not. I go, come noon. Do I want to be able to say to myself, all right, well... I didn't want to do it, but I did it. Now I can do the rest of my day. Or do I want to say, yeah, I really bitched out this morning. I, I should have gone. And then because then you got to live with that the rest of the day. So instead of that one hour time block where you're thinking about, well, that's going to suck. Think about the rest of the day. If you are talking like we kind of do to each other and you know, you kind of bitched out. Yeah. That's going to last a lot longer than that little class. Mm -hmm. So how do I want to feel at noon? Do I want to feel like the guy that went and did it, even though I didn't want to do it and now I feel good. I got it out of the way and I followed through with my commitments or from nine o'clock till I go to bed at night. Do I want to feel like, all right, I said I was going to do this. I'm paying for it. Uh, and yet I bitched out. So I like it, man. I like that. Cool. All, All right. I got. Well, this has been fuck your luck. I think that's what we're going to call oh, it. Yeah. Like that. Fuck your luck. Um, so life is what you make it. Don't just sit on the couch. Like this is, this is your only one life too. This is what I was thinking about. If you waste your life, I don't really give a shit. I mean, I, <laughs> I guess I do, but it's not my life, but this is your one fucking life. You get one opportunity, one life to make things happen. One life to live it the way that you want to live it. Like, do you want to sit on your deathbed and sit there and go, oh man, I really wanted to be a fucking, you know, I really wanted to do this and I never had the balls to do it. Or do you want to say, fuck man, no matter what I did that, I, I, I fucked up for a while. I, I might've lost a couple of things, but you know what? I got it. Or even if you didn't, if you didn't achieve it, like say you didn't achieve it and it turned into something else. Like, dude, at least I know now, at least I tried. And then like that turned into this, which is what my passion really is. You yeah. know what I mean? So right. you get one life, live your life the way that you want it. You're the only one that can change your life. You're the only one that's going to turn it into how you want it to be. Um, and thoughts turn into things. So make it the way that you want it. Like shit isn't going to just fall in your lap. Shit isn't going to just come to you. You've got to take action. You've got to make it happen. Fuck your luck. Love it. Thanks for tuning into the dads who live podcast. Uh, we do the stuff for free guys. So please give us a like, share, five star review. Uh, we need that to continue doing this. Uh, please tell one friend. We, we would really appreciate it. We really want to grow this thing so we can get it out to people. We've actually got a great group of following going so far and I appreciate that, but it's, it's taking time. It's, it's, it's maturing. It's growing, but I know it's going to fucking work. There's not a doubt in my mind that this is going to blow up. So please help us, guys. Please give us a like, share, five-star review. Tell one friend. We greatly appreciate it. Um, we are on 
all the platforms for the podcast we're on iTunes, SoundCloud, uh, YouTube. Uh, shit, I always forget them, but they're all on our uh, website www.dadsuliftofficial.com. We also have apparel for the Dads Who Lift group on the website as well. Just again, www.dadsuliftofficial.com. We're on IG. Our IG handle is Dads Who Lift Official. We're on Facebook as Dads Who Lift Podcast, and we also have a Facebook group of 32,000 now and growing like-minded dads that are just trying to be their best selves, um, stay fit at the same time. Yeah, 32,000. So if that's you, uh, check that group out on on Facebook, um, Dads Who Lift Official, and join the group. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We really appreciate it. Hope you have a great day. Alive. I think it's dead in a lie, 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 I think it's dead in a